Um, for the past few days, like there's been a thought that's running my mind, and and today I just felt that um, I should share that. So I've seen people questioning the sovereignty of God, you know, because of what's happening, and that has been in my mind for the past few days. Whatever I share, it's just um, my revelation and so um, this may not be complete or full but I, I pray that this will somehow minister to us so this question for all of us do you feel that God is in control or is some of us uh, questioning the sovereignty of God in Ephesians 1 11, it says he works all things according to the counsel of his will. And this is just the later part of um, the verse. It's not a full verse, but the later part of the verse it says, he, he works all things according to the counsel of his will. We, we are in a generation where you know, we are exposed to a lot of things, the inflow of information. It's just in the palm of our hands. 
through our mobile phones, through internet, through different mediums. So every kind of data, facts, figures, we have it in our hands. We Christians, we easily, you know, um, affirm our belief in the sovereignty of God um, when things are right, when things are going well. But our faith is challenged during times of personal affliction, during times of calamities, and during when we face death in the family, and then when there's pain, when there's suffering. And so we are, our faith is being challenged during these times. We sort of like go to a place where we think of God, who is the creator and the controller. Is he really the creator and controller of our lives? And so it is not very easy, given the circumstances, um, for us to come to a place where we can boldly say that God is in control. So that is just one part of it, the sovereignty of God. But uh, at the same time, let me also um, remind us that God is also a righteous God. He is a righteous God, which means that He cannot do wrong. One of the character of God is also righteousness. Or the standard of righteousness can be only measured God in himself. So, uh, and to affirm his righteousness, I just want to read out some verses for us. Uh, Psalms 97 2, it says, Clouds and thick darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Not only righteousness, but also justice are the foundation of his throne. And you have to explain that. In Psalms 119, 142, it says, Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is truth. God's righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and His law is truth. Another verse for us, Psalms 145, verse 17, it says, The Lord is righteous in all His ways, and kind in all His deeds. So these are just some of some verses that we can draw out from the Bible, stating the righteousness of God. Um, and there are a lot more verses in the Bible which states and which explains of um, God's righteousness. At the same time, I also want to just bring out one character, another character of God, which is God's love. Love of God, that God created love as for us. In 1 John 4, verse 8, it says, He who does not love does not know God because God is love. God Himself is love. And in, in John 3 16, a very famous verse says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And so, Love is also another factor. Okay. So many a times uh, when we think of God's sovereignty, we do not bring in His righteousness and His love into the equation. We just think of His sovereignty, but we, we seldom bring in His righteousness, which actually balances everything. So, so when we think of God's righteousness, God's sovereignty, we cannot do away with His righteousness or His love. Okay? It, it works hand in hand. And, and so uh, we cannot just say God is a sovereign God and then we cannot do away with His, his love for us, His, his ultimate, his, his agape love for us. And, and that's the reason why He sent His only Son for us. So, uh, so many a times, like we, when we weigh this um, sovereignty of God, we, the scales are wrong because we just think from one angle, we see from one angle only. But God functions in such a way that it 
His sovereignty, there is righteousness, yeah. there is love. So uh, for me, you know, um, this pandemic situation, it's a very unique situation that we, uh, that we are facing and brings new challenges even for us believers. And as unique as it is, it also presents a, you know, a unique opportunity for us believers to actually present God yeah. in a different light. Yeah, that's so true. And so I, I believe that we have to take the opportunity and then you know, and spend time with God um, and, and ask God what He wants us to do. And when we look, there's a vast difference between searching for the truth intellectually and searching for the truth by personal experience. And God is looking for that intimate relationship, yeah, exactly. a personal yeah. relationship, even, even now, even now he's looking for that. And so he wants to build that intimate relationship with us. And only in that intimacy can we find the truth. Amen. Amen. Will we be able to tap into his presence and then God will reveal his heart and his things for all his things. So uh, yes, I, f I believe that despite Despite the situation that we are in right now, I believe that God is still in control. Amen. Because He is a righteous yeah. God. He is a God who loves us. Amen. And His intentions are never to hurt us again. That's true. So true. Yeah, so uh, we spend a little time with family. So, but this is a very good time for all of us. Actually, we are having a very good time um, being able to no, stay home and then be with family and friends, spend quality, quality time with family. And so for all of us, maybe in one way we are also enjoying one another's home. But at the same time, I also want to remind us that we should not forget to go into the presence of God, to commune with God during this time. And so I just want end with this what if God is trying to say something what if God is trying to speak to us but what if we are unable to listen what if we miss out it's a very unprecedented situation that we are in what if our mind, our attention is being diverted to something else rather than diverting our attention to God. What if the circumstances is somehow like um, taking all our attention rather than giving our attention <clears throat> fully to God, who is our Creator? May this time and season uh, draw us near to God and, and bring forth new refugees in our families. So. Wow, really. God is so good and you know, I just want to have to say that the, you know, we, we miss out on the love of God and we miss out on His righteousness a lot of times when we look at the things and you know, when we, when we look at His sovereignty and um, you know, this, there are some things the Lord put in my heart as well. Just a couple of days back, I was playing with my son Leon, and you know, like he has his uh, a toy. Uh, it's it's a lion. A uh, friend of mine um, you know, gifted uh, it to him, and um, it's handmade, and so it's so beautifully woven. And I was just telling my son, you know, Leon, you are so loved, and you are so special. Because God Himself He wove you in my womb. Just like the maker of the story who wove uh, you know the, the, the toy and, and with whom you're playing right now. And and that's when the Lord just put this thing in my heart that you know, each and every one of us, whatever you may be, 
each and every one of us, they're so loved, they're so special, they're so precious. And God has woven us so beautifully, so intricately, you know, and has brought us in this world with a purpose. So I just want to release, you know, the love of God and the peace of God. I pray, it's my prayer, and I just want to release this once again, that there won't be any kind of fear in you, but there will be just love and the peace of God. And you yourself, you allow yourself to tap into His presence and just rest in His presence. And I believe that you know there will be more things the Lord will speak to you in this time, in this time and situation. The world may see it as a pandemic, as a, as a situation where you know, uh, and things are uh, just seem to be so hopeless. But we as believers, we know that there is hope in Christ. We know that there is life in Christ, and we should be, you know, those people who should be on the front line, releasing the love and life to the people. Yeah. So um, you know, we just want to. Uh, spend a little bit of time in, 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 in singing a song and just declaring the sovereignty of Jesus. And so, um, if you know the song, I just want to invite you all to just come and worship together once again and just declare the goodness of God, the sovereignty of God, and you know, His love and His peace to uh, uh, wherever you may be. Just fill up the atmosphere with, with, you know, with, with, uh, with the sovereignty of God and just declaring that God, you reign over us, that God, you are sovereign over us. Amen. Hallelujah. There is strength within. So there is beauty in our tears, and you meet us in the morning with a love that casts out fear. You are working. over every nation, Lord God. Father, we pray, God, Lord, your healing hand, your peace, your restoration, your love, and the revelation of who you are, Lord God. It will manifest it, Lord God, to people around this entire universe, Lord God, this entire earth, Lord God. Father, we are so grateful to you once again for giving us this time to come in your name and to fellowship together and to speak out the words that you have put in our hearts, Lord God. We pray, God, Lord, whatever, whatever we go on in life and whatever happens, Lord God, we will continue to declare your goodness, we will continue to declare your love, and we will continue to worship you, Lord God. Father, we thank you, we bless you, Lord God. I pray, God, that your sweet Holy Spirit will continue to minister to us in our homes. And in this season, Lord God, we bless you in Jesus' name. With thanksgiving, we pray. Amen.